Hello, everybody. Yes, I'm working for government of Estonia, so almost your neighboring country. And uh, I'm going to share with you, which I think is one of the most important experiments of the 21st century. It's an experiment how one nation state is opening its borders digitally to everybody, so that everybody can become an e-Estonian. If we succeed in this experiment, I believe we may end up achieving worldwide digital inclusion. So the story started in 2002. Each Estonian received a name, digital name. So my name is 3871201279. And I'm happy about that. I think it's a beautiful name. And as my name Casper opens me some doors in physical world, I can buy alcohol from shop and I can travel. My digital name opens me another set of doors. And it's my choice if I want to use that digital name. And I'll give you some examples what it gives to me. Because I'm traveling a lot, uh, yesterday I was in Paris, today here, tomorrow going to uh, Brussels, then I'm not, I still can be part of Estonian, Estonian economy. For example, last three times I voted in Estonian elections, I was using that card. So I was part of my democracy. Just yesterday, I digitally signed a new contract with my new employee while being in Paris. Today, I called my pharmacy because of spring, I have this allergy, so I got e-prescription. And I can go home and just get, get the pharmacist. You can establish company using that card within 20 minutes. So every time I'm going to use some service, I offer my data, and then they can offer me the service. And it's up to me whether I want to offer my data. And it's, it was already in 2002. What happened 18 months ago? We opened these gates for everybody, so that everybody can become an e-Estonian and be part of that digital society. So you too can get this digital name. It was a government program, a government startup. 18 months ago, we exactly didn't know to whom we are doing that and what are the value propositions and uh, why, what are benefits for Estonia. But we thought that, hey, let's do this time differently. Let's just launch this like startups do. Let's learn from them. Let's see what they want and let's change laws then. And that's what we did. I started to run that program uh, and first thing I did was I made a launch page. So the legislation was, wasn't even there to start issuing e-residents. I made a launch page. Hey, everybody can want to become e-residents. Put your email here. So next day when I woke up and I went to work, you know what happened? Boom. We had over 4,000 subscribers from 120 different countries, everybody wanting to become me residents. And that was first shock to me, like first time realizing that, wow, that there can be something behind that. If you want to become e resident, going through the basics, you apply online, it costs 100 euros. And then you have this fun face to face meeting. During face to face meeting, you identify yourself with passport, you give fingerprints, and you receive the card. And these are the different embassies today open to receive the card. First, you have to travel twice to Estonia to become e resident. Now we open these embassies, and after one year, we are international, so there are every city international where you can become an e-resident. And since then, we have very famous e-residents. We have uh, from Japanese prime ministers to Kai Kawasaki's. And we're starting to understand why we're doing that, and to whom we are doing that, and what else do we need to do. And I'll take you through some of the basic, most common use cases why people today become e-residents. Please meet Stanislav. Stanislav is from Ukraine, and uh, he's a painter. He loves to paint. Because of the political situation, the internal market wasn't too big, and Stanislav had to make the decision whether he quits painting or 
He found E residency. So as an E resident, then he established the Estonian company, Estonian bank account, got payment processing like Braintree, and using digital signature, till today he's running his company by living in Estonia, living in Ukraine and still running that company, and he's still painting after one year. And the problem what E resident solved him was that he couldn't sell those paintings to internationally before, because in Ukraine and in most of the world, you don't have access to payment providers, to bank accounts, to financial services. You just don't have those services. Now, after becoming an e-resident, you have the Estonian company and bank account, and this opens up all the doors in the financial world, and you can actually start selling your products to everywhere. And now he's still painting and selling his uh, paintings everywhere. Second example is from Taiwan. They are selling a bit more complicated product. It's cryptocurrency card where you can exchange bitcoins and then you can go to ATM and receive the money. So it automatically transfers the money to your currencies. The problem with these kind of financial services is that you cannot sell that to everybody. They can sell that product only to, in Taiwanese market. And why is that? Because they know your customer, you know. You need to know who the person is you're going to sell the product. And it takes usually three to four months to go to each specific country, apply to know your customer regulations, and start selling your product. So what they did now is they made e-residence integration so that e-residence has Facebook login button, you have e-residence login button, and you can log into the service. And if you log into the service as an e-resident, then we as a government guarantee that this is you. This is you who you claim to be. And that's why their team can now sell their product internationally to everybody. If someone from Nigeria wants to buy their service, she needs to become an e-resident. She has face-to-face -face check with Estonian official. Using that card, she can enter to their site and start using their service. That means that companies like this can sell their services to international market from day one. You don't need to do any more local regulation integrations. You can just scale your service international market. And that's really difficult to comprehend because usually we need to speak that like few months with startups before they understand that, hey, let's be international from day one, even if you have that, that kind of financial services. So what's going on in the world? The World Economic Forum estimates 1 billion extra internet users by 2020. But at the same time, World Forum estimates that 73% of people today are financially excluded. So you can't be part of your society if you don't have tools to be. If you can't sell services on internet. So that's what we see today. People choose the location where they live according to many factors. Some choose like the Taiwanese family in Taiwan because their family lives there. They want to live where their family lives. Others in Silicon Valley because the funding is there, or Brazil because the weather is nice, or Poland because you have good engineers in Poland. So you choose the location where you want to choose. You become e-resident of the world. And using that, you can have location-independent business environment. You can digitally sign the contracts. You can do all the administration online. Tax declarations in Estonia, less than 20 minutes. Everything is like that. And what is the other most important aspect here? That now there is an app store. There is an app store which you can use your e-residency card, your digital name, which gives you new tools, new financial tools. We mentioned about incorporation bank account a lot about crowdfunding markets, lending markets. You can be from anywhere around the world. You can put your startup in crowdfunding site, get funding, and run your company. And you don't need to move to Silicon Valley for that. So this enables full location dependence, financial inclusion, and perhaps the most important aspect, it makes people more empowered. And more, more of those people, even who today don't have the equal rights, in some regions, women, in other regions, disabled people, everybody now can have the equal opportunities on the internet to run their businesses and private life. 
We are still in beta. We just launched this program one year ago. Uh, <laughs> and there are still many laws which we need to change. For example, to open a bank account, you still need to travel to Estonia. Just yesterday, we went to Parliament three new legislation changes. One of them was bank accounts. So after July, as an EU resident, you don't need to travel to Estonia to open bank account. You can do it online. Because one face-to-face -face meeting has been there, we don't need to do the second one anymore. That means that from September, you can have full location independent business environment without ever traveling to EU. So since launch, we have over 10,000 EU residents uh, from basically every, every country there is. Um, they're running over the over 1,000 companies. And imagine the life when you don't need to travel to EU to do that. That will scale, and that will change everything. But that's not enough. Uh, the program itself has kind of grown bigger than one nation, small nation state like as Estonia can serve. There are so many people internationally who need more services, and just incorporation is not enough anymore. That's why last week's news is that we are the first country to open it to developers, and we are going to be government as a service since today. Which means that we have different APIs to start building up the services by private sector instead of government. I mentioned about authentication, that you have the API to put there and ask e residents to log in. Digital signing, you can ask through API about their corporation information, who is the shareholders, about their taxation, everything. Just last week, we haven't officially released that, but last week it was ready, the incorporation API. So that you can have private sector, like launch page, you can do incorporation on your own website, which then will be incorporated in Estonia. You understand the difference is that today governments usually compete who has the best or shortest way, how they establish company, more user-friendly way. And we have understood that this is not the right competition we want to be in, because we can never be as good and agile as private sector. That's why we are giving all the tools to private sector to develop themselves, to build the best incorporation sites and best user-friendly environments. So after half a year, I'm sure there are hundreds of sites where it takes you five minutes to enter your data, and you become an e-resident, you, you have established company which is running, established bank account which is running, and you can do your business without any hassle about administration costs. And that, of course, makes the world a very interesting place. Because the wealth of one country then doesn't matter anymore what's the internal revenues, what's your internal source, the market size. If I remember in Poland, we have 40 million people approximately, right? The good thing about Estonia is that it's so small that the 1 million people, you just can't serve those markets because there is no one there. That's why you need to think as a government also from day one that everybody is your customer. And now we can see that governments start to compete. Because if you have 40 million here and 1 million here, and then eventually you can serve everybody internationally, but you have the same cost. You still have the same police officers, establishment of company, administration cost, everything is the same, but market size is different. Eventually, you just need to open your borders international to everybody, like we have done. And we can see that already four or five different governments are following that, which makes eventually all our government services also user-friendly, because they need to start competing. And that's, I think, the pretty cool goal what we can have, to have like very, very user-friendly governments. We hope that Earth can be the country of everybody, and together with private sector, we can start serving everybody internationally, digitally, and very hassle-free way. So uh, I join you as a user to join that community, as a startups to build new services to e-residents, and as a government 
to find what we have done and learn together and build more services because we are there to help also governments to build the same infrastructure and same APIs. And I hope after a few years we can actually say that Earth is the country of everybody. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Casper. Are you all open for a question? Yes, we all have right. questions. Um, any questions? I can't really see anything out here. So uh, raise your hand if you have a question. Mm -hmm. All right, doesn't seem to be the case. Um, there's one right here. Great. Uh, we have a microphone. You know, you just have mine. Uh, OK, I guess that uh, e-residence infrastructure may, uh, has to cost something. Uh, and uh, how Estonian government uh, tackle these costs? Yeah. So the cost of the infrastructure, actually, it's distributed the data exchange layer. Like, uh, and in that sense, it's, uh, you should Google X road, then you can see it, read more. But it's approximately 100 times cheaper than, for example, UK infrastructure, and 25 times cheaper than Finland's infrastructure. Because we have data once principle, only one data center uh, base for your data so that no one else can ask about your data. And these data centers different can start communicating to each other using your digital name. And because you have the digital name, that's why we can start pulling the information together, for example, for tax declarations. And that's why it takes f some seconds because all the data is gathered. And that infrastructure is way, way cheaper than usually governments do while trying to have like one huge data center which will be backed up and, and lots of hassle about privacy then there. So the costs are very minimal and especially the open these to e-residents, there are literally zero costs because the infrastructure is there. We now just added one extra key which can open these services. All More right, questions? Time for another question. Anybody out there? Right here? You know, I'm just going to jump down. Ah, oh, survived. Hello. Just a short question about data safety and uh, cyber attacks. Yeah. How do you manage such things? Thank yeah. You. In two, two, thank you. In 2007, Estonia had the first uh, cyber attack uh, event, and some servers went down. And since then, uh, uh, we have NATO Cyber but, Defense but Center of Excellence and different uh, cyber defense uh, organizations in Estonia which are running those things. And uh, today we can say that uh, as it's decentralized, distributed, there is no single point of attack which would take down everything. When it comes to privacy, then the cool thing is that, that as it's encrypted RSA 248, you can't like steal my data. You can steal my ID card, but you need pins. Or you can steal pins, but you need my ID card. If you steal both of them, I will just close my certificates, and you can't use that. And every time you do anything online, it leaves a digital footprint. So my health records can be seen only by doctors. And if someone else's doctor sees my health data, there will be a record and on blockchain. And I can track that. And if they didn't have right to access that, then it's a court case. That transparency on internet and data ownership by the users have built throughout the last 15 years the level of trust that you don't need to trust anyone. You don't need to trust government. You can just trust mathematics and encryption and be aware that you are the owner of the data. All right. I think I have a comment or a question or something over here. A comment? Can you, can you give us a comment? Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, I've been told to be careful about the microphone. Let's see. Uh, I got a resident card last year. and. Uh, um, I uh, opened my startup company one uh, month ago. I am using Residence Cut. It's very great things, I think. Uh, great uh, solution. Thank you for Residence Cut solution. Thank you very much. It's Thank you. Yeah, that deserves a round of applause. So it's working. It's out there. All right, we have time for a last question if anybody's sitting on something. All right, down there. All right. Hi. Uh, as far as I know, it's still requested to have physical addresses in, in Estonia to register a company. And I didn't hear you. It's still it, it's still requested to have physical address yeah. in Estonia to register a company. And also, e-residency isn't 
tax residency. So is there a possible double taxation? Yeah, great are there, question. Are there any actions planned to change yeah. it? Thank you for the question. The thing to understand is that we need physical address forever, <laughs> as long as we have the EU regulations for that. Because the Estonian physical address and the Estonian bank address, you can have access to those financial tools, like payment providers, printers, etc. Without those addresses, you wouldn't have access. So the address is necessary and demanded by EU residents. But it's just like five euros per month to have that. Uh, what uh, and the second part of the question about taxation, and this is the best part. Usually governments have built like tax heavens and built ways how you can avoid taxes or launder money. And this is first time what we are doing way differently, the opposite. The system is transparent and we don't want your taxes if your business activity is not based in Estonia. So it's not a way how you can avoid taxes. And this makes the solution different because imagine now that you're from, let's say, India, you become an entrepreneur, you can start selling services, you can re get revenues, and you pay taxes to Indian government. Hence, Indian government wins of that. And what Estonia means is that Estonian service providers can start offering you services like bank accounts, physical addresses, hence they get more end users, hence they get richer, hence they pay more taxes to Estonian government. That means it's win, 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 win solution, and that's why we want to have that transparency that other countries see this as a friendly <laughs> program which helps their citizens to get extra revenues and as have hassle-free way to run their companies and to avoid avoiding taxes, avoiding Panama cases and everything that is not transparent. And we see that it really works and people really demand that transparency and people are fed up of closed systems systems where you can hide everything. And I think this is totally new market now internationally to have that transparent government system. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Please give a big round of applause to Casper Corsius from eResidency. Thank you.